Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and good evening if you're joining us from the eastern part of Indonesia, and good morning to our audience and speaker from the Netherlands. Welcome to our online info session. My name is Afwan. I am the International Mobility Officer at Novignes Indonesia, and I will be serving as your moderator for this session. Today's info session is brought to you by OKP LPDP Student Joint Scholarship Program, a collaboration between Novignes Indonesia, LPDP, and Dictiristek. This scholarship program targets Indonesian mid-career professionals who aim to contribute to Indonesia's development to pursue a master's degree at Dutch higher education institutions. The application is open now and will be closed by March 30. Please visit bit.ly slash OKP LPDP to get further details about this scholarship. Well, for the next 30 minutes, we will be hearing presentations from our speakers, representatives of University of Groningen and Redbout University, particularly about the study programs related, related to the area specific of the joint scholarship, sustainable and circular economy, focusing on urban development and heritage restoration. Afterwards, we, the speakers will answer the incoming questions from the participants, so feel free to drop your questions on the chat box. Now, moving along to our session, please welcome our first speaker, Mr. Pablo Garza, the International Marketing and Communication Officer at Redbout University, Nijmegen School of Management. Mr. Pablo, the screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the introduction. First, I want to say how beautiful that video was. I got uh, goosebumps uh, remembering. I'm also, first, also to introduce myself, I come from Mexico. Um, and I came to study in the Netherlands for the first time seven years ago uh, to the University of Groningen, actually. And to see this video really uh, brought all this memory back. So it was a, a huge, nice uh, video for sure. Um, but now, if you can uh, see my screen over here, I want to talk to you guys about Radboud University. So, yeah, welcome to Radboud University. I'm going to try to give you an impression of what it's like to study with us. And of course, as a um, Afwan also mentioned, if you have any questions at the end, uh, we will have some time to go over them. So, well, I think the video made a very nice introduction to the Netherlands. Um, and of course, now you know that Bradbury University is also based in the Netherlands, as you probably all know, uh, which is the land of the tulips, many, many bicycles everywhere you look around is full of bicycles. And of course, as well, the Heineken beer, if someone is... Um, uh, into beer as well is uh, very famous over here. But in the meantime, do you know that the higher education in the Netherlands is in the top 1% worldwide? This means that the higher education here is very, very good. And not only that, but it's also very affordable to study in the Netherlands in comparison to other countries, which is also an advantage of studying in the Netherlands. If you want to study here in the Netherlands, you will be guaranteed with an excellent education. All Dutch research universities belong to the top 200 um, universities of the world. And of course, this is no wonder why the Netherlands has raised so many famous entrepreneurial pioneers, big companies that you probably have, have heard before in your life, such as Unilever, Heineken, or Philips, which are all Dutch companies. Um, also, the Netherlands is quite a small country. The Dutch have traveled the world many times because of this. And this has made this country a very tolerant country, very open-minded people, very welcoming to other cultures. And therefore, as well, the English level here is quite well. You will be surprised that everyone in the supermarkets or in little stores to uh, the professors, teachers, um, other cultures as well, the English level here is quite high. And not only on the, in the society, but as well at the university level is a great um, English proficiency level. And not only that, but as well, you will get a uh, sure value for your money. The Dutch are very multicultural, as I already mentioned. They are very accepting to other societies, to other cultures. Um, as I already mentioned as well, many bikes, actually more bikes than people. Uh, you will be surprised of the quantity of bikes that there is uh, in this country as well. And it's just a way of life. And in the meantime, it really helps you. Um, get a healthy lifestyle, moving, and you will be surprised that it's actually in many places faster to, to reach by bike rather than taking a public transportation or also a car, which is also more sustainable, which is um, why it is a way of life over here. And now zooming a little bit further, um, 
I want to talk to you about the city of Nijmegen, which is where Radboud University is located. I don't know if uh, someone of you have heard of Nijmegen or not, but I will tell you uh, a little bit. Here in this picture, you can see uh, the Val River. And um, on the back, you can see the skyline of Nijmegen. And on this side, we have this beautiful beach. When there's sunny days, we normally go there to enjoy the sun, to play some games. And of course, you can also swim in the Val River when the weather is, is um, allowing it for sure. So here you can see the map. Here you can see, of course, where the country is. And if we go inside the, the country itself, here you can see where Nijmegen is located. And it actually has a very nice location. It's one hour away from Amsterdam, 20 minutes away from Germany with a bike. And this makes uh, Nijmegen a very nice hub if you want to explore the country itself, but also if you want to uh, discover more of Europe. Uh, the airport from Amsterdam is just one hour away. Also, we have the Eindhoven Airport, which is um, around one hour and a half away. And these are great airports that connect a lot of places in Europe. So you will find very um, good opportunities to discover as well. Nijmegen is a very safe, medium-sized town in the east of the country, and it is also the oldest city of the Netherlands. But that doesn't mean it's a it's a old city when it comes to its population. We have a very large student population, which makes it a very lively city. Which brings me to the next slide, um, which is why Nijmegen. Well, Nijmegen before uh, be, because I already mentioned before that we have a large student population. Well, it's a very lively student town. It's a, it has a lot of green spaces, a lot of green parks. We have a lot of nature around as well. We have a very rich cultural life. You will find a lot of places um, for cafes, a lot of places to listen to music, a lot of uh, places to discover some art. We have some museums as well. We have amazing restaurants as well. It's also a very excellent hub for exploring, as I already mentioned, and it's very easy to get around by bicycle. Even by walking, you can... Um, reach many places as well while enjoying as well the nature. And now going um, inside Radboud University, what uh, does Radboud University has to offer? Well, Radboud University, to give you an overview, we have seven faculties, which goes from business. We have uh, the medical faculty. We have the social sciences. We have the arts faculty. We have more than a hundred nationalities on campus, which make us a very international um, university. 76% of the students uh, who start studying obtain their bachelor diploma within four years. And one out of five studying, students are international. So that goes in hand with the other point, which it makes us a very multicultural um, community here at Rad Radboud University. Um, I personally also studied here and I have friends from Spain, I have some uh, friends from Indonesia as well. I have some friends from uh, back Mexico, from Latin America, Argentina. You can find all the nationalities here as well, but we also have a strong Dutch community here, which are very friendly. And it's also very nice to get to know their culture a little bit more. And they will always be willing to show you around for sure and, and discover this side of, uh, of um, their culture as well. Um, inside Radboud University, one of our faculties is the Nijmegen School of Management, which is focused, as the name says, on management topics. Um, the faculty is the one that you can see on the background of that picture. It's a very modern faculty. Um, we have very nice facilities um, in this, um, in this uh, faculty. We, it's a very green campus as well. We have a very strong international community. The interdisciplinary approach um, is very... You can get very close contact with the professors as well. We have lectures. We have also tutorials, which is classes where you will get to ask questions to your professors. You will They will send you some papers where you would have to read beforehand, and then they will explain it to you in class. You will be able to uh, have group projects with other people as well from your class. And it's a very strong uh, research-focused university, which means that um, you will have to do some research on certain topics as well at the end of the pro at the end of the program that can contribute some something to society as well. Uh, and it's also important to mention it's not in these points, but sustainability is also a very strong focus that the NIME School of Management has when it comes to their with their masters under topics in general. Which brings me to the first um, uh, 
the first masters that I want to talk about if someone is interested in, which is spatial planning, which goes in hand with all these urban designing um, part or topics that if you are interested in. So if you are really into future changes in cities or regions, um, this spatial planning masters might be something for you. Uh, the, normally the people who are the spatial planners take a role as managers of spatial transformations of cities or spaces, closed spaces, such as shopping districts or thinking of uh, all industrial sites as well, designing water retention area, shaping urban mobility concepts for the future. So if urban designing is something for you, you might be interested in this spatial planning. There's four different specializations when it comes to these masters. The first one is cities, water, and climate change. Uh, so this is if you're interested in, uh, in uh, climate proofing cities or making cities climate neutral. Well, this might be something interesting for you. The next one we have is the European spatial and environmental planning. Um, this one particularly teaches you to become a spatial planner who can engage with uh, European Union policies. So here you will learn how to cooperate with planners across borders and coordinate with other sectors like environment or economic development as well. Then the next one we have is planning land and real estate development. As the name says, this specialization provides a land and real estate development perspective on urban development. And this program basically aims to prepare students for a future role as city developers, either it could be in a public or also in a private sector as well. And the last one specialization we have for spatial planning is urban and regional mobility. As you can read probably for the name and see on that picture, um, it deals with the increasingly complex flows of people that are arriving in certain cities or region and how can you mobilize all these people uh, through regions. So it will look into different integrated mobility systems or transport models at different uh, spatial scales as well. Then the next master we have is the environment and society studies. This is another master we have. And this master, well, as his name says, it discusses basically the most pressing environmental challenges that we are facing uh, nowadays. So this is a very, um, in a way, focus a lot of so societal problems, societal issues, societal transformations towards sustainable uh, futures as well. So you can think of prominent topics such as environmental justice, biodiversity, non-human animals, circular economy, energy, and water. And this master also has four specializations that you can choose. Uh, so either you can go for corporate sustainability, where you will rethink the economic processes to enhance environmental responsibility when it comes to businesses. So basically, how can we make the economy work within the boundaries of our planet uh, when it comes to businesses, uh, particularly? The second one is European spatial and environmental planning, which if uh, if you notice, is the same um, specialization we also have for spatial planning but then you can you can decide which focus to give if a more spatial planning focus or if you want to focus more on the environmental side then we have global environment and sustainability which uh, deals with the global level of sustainability transformations and policies intended to make major strides towards sustainable future so for example you will focus on agreements on climate change or agreements on biodiversity or nature conservations, for instance, as well. Um, the last one we have is local environmental change and sustainable cities. Uh, in this master, you will focus on how to deal with issues regarding, um, for instance, energy transition or water, mobility as well, circularity and nature conservation, for example, in a city or in a specific region. Um, these specializations focus on the level of sustainability transformation and as well on the integration of different policies as well. So as you can see, we have these two masters and you can decide which uh, specialization suits you better or which ones you would like to have a focus on. And then um, you can find as well all this information on our website where you can see a deeper and testimonials from our students as well if you would like to, to get to know a little bit more about them. So I can understand first, uh, yeah, we, we get too excited about them, but first we would like to know what are the admissions requirements as well uh, for this. Um, well, it's important for the masters to have a bachelor degree obtained at a research university or uh, a bachelor's degree that is equivalent to a research university diploma. Uh, and it has to be 
in the same study area as the intended master program. Um, when you apply, your diploma will be assessed in an in individual way. So if you want to have a pre-eligibility check, you can do so on our website, or you can also contact our admissions office, and uh, we will help you uh, determine if you are eligible or not with a pre-eligibility check. Nevertheless, the final decision will be uh, taken by the admissions board. At the end, I will leave you some uh, contact information here so you can write those emails down if you have some uh, questions. Um, as well, well, the language requirements, you will need to have a proficient uh, English level. You, you can find as well the different scores per exam also on our website. And of course, as well, all the programs will ask you to send a motivation letter, which also will be very um, important for the admissions board. Uh, when it comes to the applications, you will have to submit first your application to the study program before you can apply to the to the scholarship. So we can do the application via StudyLink. StudyLink is the national system for university applications. So either you want to apply to University of Groningen, or if you want to apply with us, you will first need to apply via StudyLink for any university. It's like a standard national system. Um, the deadline, as uh, you probably already know, is the uh, 30th, 30th of March, but you have to make sure to finalize your application with us as well before that, that day. Um, it's important to mention because sometimes some students start the application but don't finalize it. So please make sure to finalize it, then we can process your application without any, any trouble. Um, some important dates as well that we have here. Um, we will have some other events as well if you have some other questions or we can talk some stuff other in detail as well. We have some virtual open days um, where you can get to know more about the university, more about uh, the, the faculties, more about how it's to be a student here. Uh, important to mention as well, we also have a, pro a program called Student for a Day. So in case you are unsure on which master to choose, you can already talk to students, you can, we can set a day for you where you can actually get to know the classes better, you can enter online classes as well, then you get, get a better, better idea of uh, the master you're going to apply in case you're not really sure. We have some virtual fairs as well, you can find the information on, the, on those links. And then on the right, we have some upcoming events in case you are interested in, you can also note them down and visit us for sure also in those uh, upcoming events. Um, and last but not least, because I know it's uh, some information with the programs as well, it's a quick overview, uh, but if you still have any questions, I think at the end we will have some time, but anyway, I would suggest writing these um, emails down, since these two uh, masters belong to the Nijmegen School of Management, which is where I'm currently working at, we have this email called master at fm.ru.nl. I would suggest writing down, that down in case you have any information about admissions, if you're eligible, if you want to have a pre-eligibility check, uh, or if you want to get to know more about the programs, get this uh, student for a day uh, experience, please feel free to contact us. Um, here, uh, the international office will, will be glad to help you along uh, the whole process. So yeah, it would be nice. And also we have our social media there in case you want to have more information about uh, Radboud University and how is it like to be a student? There's a lot of nice content over there. So I will suggest also to, to go and read it. And that will be uh, from my side. Well, thank you, Fablo, for your uh, presentations about Nijmegen, about the university, and also about the uh, program offered in the scholarship. Uh, it's uh, really impressive to learn that your campus is equipped with the modern facilities and also uh, applying interdisciplinary approach besides it is international it has international community and also known as a green campus well we don't we still waiting for your uh, question from the audience our second speaker is miss uh, ponte carolin she is the representative of university of Groningen in indonesia without any further delay please welcome miss ponte miss ponte the screen is yours Hi, Afwan. Thank you very much for the uh, opportunity. Uh, that was very nice uh, information from uh, Neso and also from Pablo from Radboud University. Okay, uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Selamat sore. Uh, let me introduce that I am Ponte Caroline. I'm from Grow Office. Grow Office is the uh, representative office of University of Groningen 
for Indonesia. Okay, let me share my screen first. Okay. Can you see? Yes, we can see the, the slide. Okay, I will try to make it uh, as a full screen. Does it work? Is it full already? Uh, not yet. Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, it takes time. Yeah. Okay. In my screen, it's already full screen. I hope. Yeah, it's full screen now. Okay. Okay, so welcome to the University of Groningen. Okay, as I mentioned that I'm Ponte Caroline and I am from Grow Office. And in this presentation, I will mix my presentation between English and Bahasa Indonesia. So uh, if, if uh, people want to ask in Bahasa Indonesia or want to give comments, please go. Okay, selamat sore semuanya. So, here are the services of our office atau uh, jasa apa saja yang kami uh, bisa berikan sebagai perwakilan resmi dari University of Groningen. Pertama, kantor kita telah berdiri sejak 2008. Artinya telah 15 tahun pengalaman dalam hal uh, memberikan informasi mengenai studi di Groningen dan juga untuk student recruitment. Uh, kami sebagai pusat informasi uh, spesialnya untuk University of Groningen. But uh, actually, I would like to inform that besides we represent uh, the University of Groningen in Indonesia, we also represent for Radboud University. But in this occasion, I will focus the information on the University of Groningen. Okay. And we also uh, give atau bisa memberikan konsultasi secara gratis. Ya. Jadi kalau teman-teman uh, yang di sini ingin bertanya lebih lanjut, ingin ada pertanyaan atau konsultasi secara pribadi, misalkan by online seperti ini, atau mungkin datang ke kantor kami, itu silahkan. Dan semuanya adalah free of charge. ya. Dan kita juga dapat membantu untuk registrasi online. Seperti diketahui bahwa pendaftaran ke Belanda adalah secara online. Jadi dokumennya disubmit secara online, dan itu bisa kami bantu untuk panduan registrasinya. Kantor kita juga bisa membantu untuk follow up ke university, dan juga untuk uh, terjemahan atau legalisasi uh, dokumen ya. Kemudian juga untuk uh, persiapan bahasa Inggris seperti diketahui untuk uh, sekolah ke Belanda menggunakan bahasa Inggris full dan di sini uh, kalian harus submit sertifikat IELTS atau TOEFL. Nah, bila teman-teman ingin preparation atau mempersiapkan supaya bisa mendapatkan skor IELTS atau TOEFL yang lebih tinggi, kalian bisa juga uh, kontak kantor kita. Ya, kemudian service lain adalah kita selalu mengadakan pre-departure briefing bila sebelum keberangkatan student. Biasanya kira-kira tiga -kira minggu sampai sebulan sebelum keberangkatan. Begitu juga dengan pelaksanaan group departure. Artinya kita akan mengakomodir semua uh, layanan dari informasi, pendaftaran, kemudian follow up sampai pada keberangkatan. Nah, bila teman-teman lihat di foto di uh, layar adalah salah satu kegiatan dari kantor kami. Oke, okay, uh, berikut adalah highlight untuk University of Groningen ya. University of Groningen merupakan salah satu universitas tertua di Belanda ya. We established since uh, 1614. Jadi udah uh, lebih dari 400 tahun pengalaman di bidang akademis ya. Dan selalu masuk dalam top 100 uh, ranking dunia dalam berbagai macam uh, version ranking. Dan kita memiliki lebih dari program studi internasional uh, dalam bahasa Inggris artinya ya program internasional ini baik untuk degree uh, bachelor, master maupun PhD. Dan kami juga sangat uh, international oriented. University of Groningen telah memiliki banyak sekali uh, international partner dan network di seluruh dunia termasuk di Indonesia ya uh, dengan universitas-universitas uh, top Indonesia dan juga dengan uh, instansi atau lembaga-lembaga di Indonesia. Uh, kampus kami juga memiliki empat peraih uh, Nobel Prize winners. Kemudian uh, international student juga jumlahnya sangat banyak di Groningen, termasuk besar ya ini 25% dari total students. Dan ini ada sekitar 130 nationalities. Jadi banyak sekali. Kalian teman-teman kalau sedih ke sana akan punya berbagai macam teman dari berbagai macam bangsa. Ya. Jadi dalam satu kelas itu bisa ada mungkin berbelas-belas teman-teman uh, dari berbagai macam negara. 
Dan yang terpenting, uh, Groningen merupakan the best student city of the Netherlands, yang merupakan salah satu kota pelajarnya nih, kota pelajar yang terbaik di Belanda. Dan foto di slide itu adalah salah satu akademik building kami. Bagus ya bentuknya ya. Oke, okay, program apa saja yang uh, akan kami infokan sekilas di sini? There are four programs that is uh, eligible for OKP scholarship atau program di University of Groningen yang bisa uh, di apply menggunakan dengan scholarship OKP. Kita ada empat program, pertama MSc Environmental and Infrastructure Planning, ini di bawah Faculty of Spatial Science. Kemudian yang kedua uh, MA atau Master of Arts uh, History of Architecture and Town Planning. Ya, ini di bawah Faculty of Arts and Humanities. Kemudian yang ketiga adalah MSc Sustainable and Entrepreneurship. Ya, ini di bawah kampus Friesland. Dan yang terakhir MSc Business Administration, spesialisasinya Small Business and Entrepreneurship. Namun dalam sesi ini uh, saya akan membahas dua program yang di atas. Ya, yang Environmental Infrastructure Planning and MA History of Architecture and Town Planning. Ya, ini sekilas uh, mengenai program yang pertama ya, environmental program. Kira-kira uh, apa highlightnya pada program ini kalian akan uh, mendapatkan atau akan dialamatkan pada masalah-masalah atau isu-isu pressing urban and regional planning ya, seperti contohnya isu climate change adaptation, rapid urbanization, transitioning towards resilient cities, regions, dan memastikan bagaimana menciptakan sebuah lingkungan kehidupan yang nyaman dan bersih ya itu tujuannya. Kemudian eh, kalian juga akan diajarkan untuk examine policy program atau menguji ya, menguji kebijakan-kebijakan. Eh, eh, kemudian propose planning intervention untuk topik-topik sebagai berikut. Misalkan contohnya topik flood resilient cities, integrated infrastructure solutions, energy transition and healthy urban and regional living environments. Ini kira-kira fokus dari program tersebut. Kemudian uh, siapa saja yang bisa atau eligible mendaftar pada program ini, tentu saja uh, seperti kebanyakan kampus di Belanda, mensyarat, master program mensyaratkan bachelor dari bidang yang relevan. So if you are bachelor's degree in human geography and planning, ya, atau social geography and planology, or special planning and design, itu admissible untuk mendaftar ke program ini. Misalkan Anda tidak uh, directly admitted atau not directly admissible, di University of Groningen tersedia program pre-master. Tapi tentunya nanti akan dilihat dulu nih dari transkrip nilainya ketika kalian sudah submit. Nah, bila ingin tahu lebih lanjut, silahkan buka websitenya tertera di bawah ini. Boleh juga di screenshot, mungkin nanti mau cek setelah ini ya. Oke, okay, next. Nah, ini adalah struktur dari uh, program Environmental and Infrastructure Planning. ya. Programnya berdurasi satu tahun. Dalam satu tahun itu terbagi dari dua semester dan dua semester dibagi menjadi periode ada empat periode ya. Contohnya semester pertama ya ini ada periode satu. Ini kira-kira highlight subjeknya apa saja? Kalian nanti akan dihadapkan pada isu-isu atau subjek uh, course seperti contohnya ya di periode satu uh, dilemas in infrastructure planning. Kemudian environmental infrastructure planning interactive workshop. Kemudian juga ada planning teori. Dan ini bobotnya sebanyak 5 ICTS itu 5 kredit. Ya. Ini pada uh, periode 1. Lalu di periode 2, subjek apa kira-kira akan dibahas itu adalah comparative research and planning practice. Kemudian ada elektif, jadi kalian bisa memilih program nanti ya. Bebas pilihan. Dan di uh, periode 2 ini, semester 1 sudah dimulai untuk perencanaan tesisnya. Kemudian masuk ke semester 2, yaitu periode 2 itu akan agak uh, dibahas subjek transition in water management misalkan kemudian subjek lain ada di inventing environmental planning dan masih dengan tentang tesis sudah mulai dibahas lebih uh, intens ya di semester ini semua kreditnya juga sama 555 ya kemudian di uh, periode terakhir itu uh, kalian bisa mengambil elektif satu program ya dan di sini akan lebih banyak atau difokuskan untuk penyelesaian tesis Nah, kira-kira gambarannya sudah jelas ya. Jadi program satu tahun dengan blok-blok seperti ini. Oke. Ya, kemudian nah sekarang kita masuk sorry. 
masuk ke program uh, selanjutnya ya, yaitu MA History of Architecture and Town Planning. Nah, di program ini, apa kira-kira yang akan uh, dibahas atau program ini highlight-nya adalah sebagai berikut ya. Kalian akan diajarkan untuk explore the evolution of cities, villages, park, landscape design, semuanya within the changing global setting. Ya, kemudian uh, program ini juga akan uh, provide atau menyajikan kepada kalian uh, rich and varied introduction to the history and theory of architecture and urban planning. Ya, jadi akan belajar mengenai ya perencanaan tata kota, kemudian teori arsitektur ya dan sejarahnya seperti itu. Uh, sebuah uh, arsitektur uh, healthcare atau program arsitektur healthcare itu juga mensyaratkan pemahaman atau understanding of the history and theory of architecture. Healthy cities can only be analyzed against the background of urbanism and the expertise center of architecture. Ya, jadi urbanism and health Semuanya ini embedded atau integrated dalam in a classical approach of architectural and urban history and theory. Ini kira-kira highlight uh, program tersebut ya. Dan di program ini uh, memungkinkan buat students untuk mengambil spesialisasi. Ini ada dua spesialisasi. The first specialization is in classical history and theory and the health impacts of architecture and urbanism. Atau bisa juga gabungan keduanya ya. Dan bila ingin mendaftar ke program ini uh, harus memiliki background bachelor uh, degree yang tentunya relevan atau paling tidak dalam bidang-bidang sebagai berikut bidang arsitektural, urban history, urban studies, urbanism, urban design, public health, urban health dan lain sebagainya yang terkait dengan subjek tersebut. Ya, bila ingin tahu lebih lanjut juga silahkan untuk membuka websitenya langsung. Nah, bila nanti teman-teman uh, telah tertarik. Ada dua program yang tadi saya telah uh, jelaskan sekilas ya. Apa saja yang harus dipersiapkan? Tentunya pendaftaran ya dan pendaftaran harus uh, online. Dokumen apa saja adalah sebagai berikut. Ini adalah uh, dokumen persyaratannya. Jadi harap disiapkan dokumen contohnya uh, ijazah uh, sertifikat ya atau diploma sertifikat. Bila belum dalam bahasa Inggris harus diterjemahkan dalam bahasa Inggris. Kemudian transkrip, ada kopi paspor, motivation statement berupa esai. Isinya motivasi kalian untuk lebih ke sana dan mengambil program tersebut. Dan juga bahasa Inggris dengan skor minimum 6,5 atau IBT, IBT TOEFL 92. Nah, jadi buat teman-teman yang belum punya uh, skor Inggris tersebut, harus dipersiapkan. ya Kurikulum VT dan juga uh, surat referensi atau reference letter dari universitas asal satu dan dari tempat kerja satu. Ya, jadi ada dua. Nah, harusnya bila kalian ingin mendaftar pada program di Universitas Kepulauan dan mengajukan OKP scholarship buat intake September 2023, harusnya dokumen ini sudah ready, should be ready by now. Ya, tapi ya sekali lagi ya, kembali ke kalian. Kemudian bagaimana dengan registration prosesnya? Uh, the process is very handy and simple. So you have to register terus di link and OAS. OAS is the online application system of the University of Groningen. Kemudian nanti enrollment-nya itu akan dilakukan oleh admission office dan memakan waktu agak cukup memakan waktu ya, ini antara 4 minggu sampai 6 minggu. Nah, jadi kalau kalian mulai mendaftar sekarang, saat ini di tanggal 20-an Februari, hasilnya bisa bisa keluar di Maret akhir. Nah, ini agak tricky. Which is the deadline of OKP scholarship is 30 March this next month ya jadi waktu kalian sebenarnya singkat banget kecuali kalau kalian sudah punya sudah lengkap semuanya di tangan dokumen di slide yang tadi saya jelaskan sebelumnya and how to apply everything should be online through the system but it's very easy you can just contact us ya kita akan bantu kalian untuk pendaftaran bisa kontak kantor kita kantor grow dengan email sebagai berikut ya ini slide ini boleh di screenshot juga bisa email ke info at .net atau ke saya, ponti.karolin at .net. Atau telepon ke kantor kami di nomor tersebut. Atau bisa juga chat via WhatsApp. ya Dan nanti teman-teman bisa mengadakan konsultasi lebih lanjut. Misalkan ingin konsultasi uh, online, by WhatsApp video call, atau datang ke kantor kami, atau dengan modal apapun nanti bisa berbicara. 
Oke, okay, uh, saya rasa itu saja highlightnya dan ini adalah foto-foto kegiatan uh, Grow dan University of Groningen Activities in Indonesia. Jadi uh, kita juga sudah uh, sangat rutin dari tahun ke tahun, dari masa ke masa mengadakan kegiatan ya uh, dan bertemu meet and greet dengan audiens, dengan uh, seperti teman-teman di sini ya, dengan student, dengan kandidat, begitu. Oke, okay, uh, ya, saya rasa cukup sekian dan terima kasih. Ada pertanyaan, silahkan kontak kami dan silahkan ditanyakan di sini. Oke, okay, Aswan, Afwan, sepertinya yeah. cukup infonya. Ya. Yeah. Oke, okay, saya stop share. Uh, thank you, Miss Ponti, what an Welcome. interesting presentation. As mentioned by her, not only the oldest university in the Netherlands, but also University of Groningen is also top uh, top 100 ranks worldwide. It offers more than 100 international programs with diverse group of students, about 25% international students from 130 nationalities. Uh, university of Groningen offers uh, four programs in OKP, LPDP, Sunni Johnson, Student Joint Scholarship Program. Before jumping in uh, to start answering the question from the audience, I would like to ask uh, both of the speakers uh, if uh, the applicants, uh, if the backgrounds of bachelor degree of the applicants is not related with the field of the study, but they have a relevant work experience, is, is he or she eligible for admission or not? Okay, who first answering? Okay, I would like to answer first. Okay, uh, if the background is not really related, actually uh, you have to send the complete document first, the transcript and everything. And then the decision uh, will be given by the admission office team. If you are not really admissible, they can offer you a pre-master, but still um, it depends. Not every programs, not every master programs offers Three master programs, so it depends on the program. Yeah, so we cannot uh, answer it is admissible or not before we take a look at the documents, the transcript, and etc. Yeah. yeah, on my side is I think Ponty answered uh, perfectly as well. On my side is the same. So the only thing uh, we could advise you is just contact us, send us a transcript of records, and we will be glad to uh, give you a personalized um, answer and advice as well. But yeah, we, we do have some pre-masters as well that we could offer in that case. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to read a question. Sorry, Afwan, can I yes? ask you a question? Yeah. If, if the students uh, refer to take the pre-master, is mm -hmm. the pre-master programs covered by the scholarship? No, it is not covered by the OKP PDP Student Scholarship Program. So only the main programs? Yes, covered. yeah. Okay, we're going to answer the question, uh, the question from the chat box. The first question is from Angita Gres Octora. The question is, is there any specific apps or maybe applications that we should master prior getting our master at Redbird University and University of Groningen? Sorry, which uh, question? Is there any specific, specific apps? apps? Applications. What um, does it mean by apps? Application or? Or what is apps? Uh, Angita Grace, uh, do you want to ask the question directly? I invite you to open your mic. Yes, uh, maybe can you explain a bit more specific? What is uh, what do you mean by apps? Is it like application or what do you mean? Angita. Uh, hi. Um. Hi, I Angita. Me? Yeah. So my question is. Uh, are there any specific application that we should master prior to getting our master at Redwood University and University of Groningen? And by apps, I mean like application that related to the study. Maybe uh, application like uh, AutoCAD or maybe a SketchUp. Yeah, application related to the study. Thank you. Yeah, that, that is a very good question. And I think it will really depend on the program you choose at the end. I don't think for environmental and societal studies are specific apps that you should. Um, but I would also, I'm not really sure. I think for, for spatial planning, there's specific apps that you would need to use um, for design. But I would suggest if you want to send us an email as well, and then we can um, 
uh, forward this to the student advisor and then they can give you a specific answer because to be honest, I'm not completely sure about the apps, um, but I think it's a good, a very good question. Yeah. And also for University of Groningen, I think uh, more or less is similar with Radboud University. Uh, we don't really require uh, specific apps to apply for the master program at the university. Okay, thank you, um, Pablo and Ms. Ponti. Uh, well, I have a question. Um, uh, normally programs, we also ask the applicant to send a motivation letter, right? Uh, do you have any advice what aspect that should be emphasized in their motivation statement to get the letter of acceptance from the university? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you okay, you go, go first. first yeah, I go first. Yes. Um, yeah, I would just uh, suggest to really take uh, time uh, to write it. Um, don't just try to make it fast. Just really take your time. Um, don't feel the pressure and just try to really put uh, in a way your personality on that letter. At the end, this letter, in a way, is one of the only documents we have from uh, like personally yourself. Yeah, we do have your transcript. Yeah, we do have your, your grades and everything. But this letter has to tell us something about yourself. What do you want out of this master's? Why are you applying to it? What are you gonna make with it? Um, what is your commitment uh, with society? What is your commitment uh, with the world? I don't know, really try uh, to put uh, in this letter some about you yourself. This is without seeing a picture of yourself, this letter um, needs to tell us something about yourself and why you really want uh, to be starting with us so uh, that would be my advice just be um, yourself be real and try to tell us a nice story with it yes i think uh, yes i also agree with uh, pablo said and the most important thing the documents or the motivation statement should be original so uh, original from you, what is your interest, what is the specific uh, within you, and what is uh, your goal, and then uh, what will be achieved, or what will you do after you granted the degree, the master degree, and how do you want to implement for the, your environment, for example, and must be original. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, and um, a follow up to the question. Um, what kind of, uh, what makes the, the, the applicants uh, normally fail to get the letter of acceptance when they're applying to the university? Sorry, uh, you mean uh, what, for- What kind uh, of the obstacles that, uh, that okay. they face that makes them fail to get the, to obtain the letter of acceptance from the university okay. normally? Yeah. I think as long as the applicants submit the complete documents that are met, with the requirement, yeah, most most of them get a admission letter. So yeah, the admission team will see your like your transcript, your GPA, your uh, relevance between uh, your education background with the master degree that you want to pursue, and then of course the English language skill also important factor. So you should. Uh, achieve the minimum of the English requirement and you just submit the required documents and then uh, one more thing don't submit the documents late because you know the university or, or the admission office really needs time to assess your documents like about four weeks yeah so please apply as soon as possible and complete your document as soon as possible yeah, and from our Radboud University it would be the same. Like those are the three things we looked at um, when uh, assessing applications. The relevance of your uh, academic background, for sure, as Ponty just explained perfectly. Uh, then the English requirements and then the motivation letter as well will be another important factor. Uh, we do ask, um, I think, uh, I'm not really sure uh, if University of Groningen also asked for this, but we also ask a description of your courses the ones uh, you yeah. took, which I think will be pretty important as well. So the admissions office can de determine if uh, they are relevant for, for your application for the master. So uh, please make sure uh, to also take some time on, on writing the descriptions for the courses. And yeah, if they uh, they have all this, this stuff um, like good, I think it will be good to go for sure. 
Yes, that is correct, Pablo. Uh, University of Groningen also requires the course description documents, such as a syllabus of the courses. So in certain subject, they will need to know deeper about the program. Okay, thank you for the answer. We also have questions from Ixtan Hafiz Luxmanto. It's more related to okay, PLPDP eligibility criteria. It was stated that one of the criteria is not working for a bilateral or multilateral organization, non-organization, a non-governmental organization that is international active and is focused on representing social interests such as development, cooperation, nature, and environmental protection, health, or human rights. Is this correct? It means that the prospective applicants must not be currently working in such organization to be eligible for this scholarship. Thank you. Yes, it's correct. It's one of the eligibility criteria for the OKPR PDP Senior Joint Scholarship Program. And the second question is about the offer letter that will be sent out by Red Belt and Honigan University. Are the offer letters non-conditional? If it's non-conditional, is it correct that prospective student must wait and reapply next year to be eligible for the OKPR PDP scholarship and in line with the scholarship timeline? So is it the, the non-conditional or conditional? Maybe oh. I think what uh, what he means is the conditional. Mm -hmm. So the admission is still condition with certain condition. Mm -hmm. So after the candidates uh, fulfill all the conditions and the admission letter will be unconditional admission mm -hmm. letter. So mm -hmm. you can be admitted unconditionally. Yeah. Does it mean is that uh, what he means? Uh, Isan. Uh... Could you please open your mic or maybe do you want to ask this question directly to us? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Also for the answer for the previous question. Um, uh, because um, what I comprehend from the from the non-conditional and conditional offer letters are the, the conditional offer letters can be uh, deferred until next year of application. Is that correct? Or, or uh, this, uh, this the non-conditional one, uh, the non the, the conditional one, uh, the non-conditional one still can can be can be used to to apply for the scholarship for next year. Uh, okay, so I think I get the point. So if you don't succeed yet for th this year. You can defer your your admission to the next year. Yes, from the University of Tottenham. Yes, you can defer. You can always defer uh, your admission to the next year. Either it is conditional admission or mm -hmm. unconditional admission, as long as you give uh, information to us in advance. So in the next year, we can renew. We can issue the renewed admission letter. Okay, thank you, Bonti. And in my in my case. Um, we will need uh, for you to start the application in a way again, but with the same documents, but we would need another um, application. But uh, as we say to our students who face a similar situation, if you already received a, a non-condition, uh, you are accepted for, for example, um, or not. And if those papers were admissible, you can always apply with the same documents. Um, and then we just need for logistical stuff to have a new application as well. Okay, thank yeah. you for the answers, Pablo and Bupanti. Thank You're you. Welcome. And, uh, and Ixan, also, I would like to remind you that for the OKP LPDP Senate Joint Scholarship Program, we only accept the uh, non conditional uh, letter of acceptance. Uh, we don't have any question from the chat box. Uh, if you have any question, please drop your question on chat box. Uh, we still have five minutes to answer the question. I also still have some questions. Uh, since the Netherlands has been experiencing a housing shortage at this moment, is there housing available for the graduate students on your campus? Or do you have the students to find the, the accommodation? Yeah, this is this is a very good question, and I think it's also very important that you mentioned it so we can discuss it here. Yeah, as you guys probably know, there's a whole country uh, crisis when it comes to housing. Uh, we do want to say that it's very hard to to find probably in, in almost all the cities here in, in, in the Netherlands. Um, however, here at Radboud University, we do offer housing assistance still 
uh, important to mention for the first year. Uh, normally, we take into account the students who come from further away. So in this case, for Indonesian students, we do offer this housing assistance, um, which is basically one room in a complex where it can be either uh, on campus or it can be somewhere in the city. You have different options. And of course, depending on the budget or if you want to share with more people, with less people. Um, but it is uh, very important to mention that it is only for a year, uh, this housing assistance uh, that we offer. Yes, that's very good that our uh, board has uh, like housing assistance. Yeah. yeah. As for the University of Groningen, we don't have a housing within the university, but um, after you get uh, fully admitted, the university will send you a uh, link that you can reserve or book housing. And the tips is please do uh, as early as possible. So if uh, you still make the reservation of housing in time frame, in the right time frame, I think most of our students can get the housing before their departure to Netherlands in August. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you, Mbak Ponti and Mr. Pablo. Uh, my last questions may be, what kind of networking opportunities do you offer to the, the graduates? Uh, is there any alumni communities that maybe help them to grow professionally? Yeah, here uh, at uh, Radboud, we do have uh, even an alumni uh, career offices as well, which will help you connect with um, with alumni. We have a strong alumni network as well once you graduate that you can access and have networking events as well. But in the meantime, we also have uh, career officers that will help you connect in the meantime while you're studying with, with companies, with entrepreneurs, with other alumni as well that will help you as well apply in a way what you're learning uh, meanwhile you're studying and then as well it, it is up to you to make the most out of these connections and uh, yeah if you want to do something with them um, from outside the university then it's up to you I think uh, Radbar really gives you a lot of tools and resources for you to connect with companies entrepreneur alumni and then um, all any students well they decide what to do with all these uh, different resources Yes, I think it's also the same with the University of Groningen. Uh, the university has like a career office and then uh, the university also has like a alumni association that you can uh, make networking with other alumni, so specifically with Indonesian alumni, for example, or in a bigger and wider alumni in general from the Groningen, then you can ask any opportunities or networking. It's always open the opportunities to do networking, of course. But uh, can I ask a question? Is it uh, possible for the OKP scholarship uh, awardees mm -hmm. after they, their graduation in the university in the Netherlands, they are not coming back to Indonesia, but they find a work outside or they find a work in Netherlands. Is it uh, possible? Well, well, actually, uh, the, the scholarship is, is the cooperation a scholarship, the joint scholarship between Indonesia and uh, the government and the Netherlands government, and we're investing to our to our awardee, and we are really expect them to come back to Indonesia yeah, to contribute why. to this yeah. country. Yeah, because yeah, most of the scholarship sponsor or provider they ask the the awardees to come back to their own uh, homeland. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, our time is running out again. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pablo and Miss Ponti, for answering those questions and your presentation. It was great. It was a pleasure to have you with us. I would like to remind all of our audience that we still have one info session on entrepreneurship today with Ms. Ponti and Mr. Pablo also. Again, if you're interested to apply for OKP LPDP Student Joint Scholarship Program, the application is open now and will be closed by March 30, 2023. Please visit the website bit.ly slash OKP LPDP. So this concludes the session. Thank you for attending. We hope you have learned and enjoyed the session. See you in the next sessions. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.